we will be dealing with in the next couple of days. Mr. Speaker, I submit. Thank you. Uh, Senator Ledama. Senator Ledama. Order. Order. Uh, Senator, Senator Chirangay. And you need Senator Kajuan. The, the mandate of the Senate is to prosecute this matter at the plenary. However, the Senate, in its own wisdom, can decide to form a committee. Senator Churange. Mr. Speaker, I rise to oppose uh, the motion from the onset on the three reasons. One, Mr. Speaker, the trophy and the defenders of devolution uh, today in the afternoon, Mr. Speaker, sir, goes to the great members of County Assembly of Meru. Mr. Speaker, I hope many MCAs should benchmark with the wonderful work that the MCAs of Meru are doing. They have been very consistent and patient, and I want to laud them for taking the bold the, the ball step, Mr. Speaker. You know, most of the, unfortunately, governors have met most of our MCAs as, uh, as their partners in uh, bad governance in counties, Mr. Speaker. This should be a warning to many county governors that when you have MCAs who play their rightful role of oversight, Mr. Speaker, then it is very important. So I allowed, Mr. Speaker. Number two, Mr. Speaker, there, there are reasons as to why standing order number 80 and section 33 is very clear. Mr. Speaker, when we prosecute either by committee or by plenary, Mr. Speaker, I want to invite most of the colleagues who have never had the privilege and rare opportunity of prosecuting to look plenary, Mr. Speaker. What is Mr. the Speaker, point of order, Senator Eddie? Please, my time. Mr. Speaker, I rise with the point of order of limiting debates. Mr. Speaker, the Senator Fernandi has just prosecuted on this matter conclusively, stood in front of this house and gave a judgment on the work of MCS and on the personality of the governor for Meru, which in his own wisdom, what uh, you have read, what you read as charges that were afforded before us, the governor stands guilty. Mr. Speaker, the debate that we are having here is whether we are going to prosecute these matters on principle in committee or in the plenary. Is there again in order, Senator Chiragay in order, Mr. Speaker, to make a judgment on substantive issues that we are, we are, we are yet to discuss as a House, Mr. Speaker? And Mr. Speaker, you, 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 in your ruling, Mr. Speaker, I find this one grossly disorderly, Mr. Speaker. Given that you had given Senator Chiragay a lot of warnings, Mr. Speaker, and I think that he's doing this deliberately, Mr. Speaker, perhaps to actually disregard the orders that you're giving, Mr. Speaker. I think you should find him in order, Mr. Speaker, if it pleases you so, and throw him out of this house, Mr. Speaker, because he's reducing this house to a mere theater of jokes, Mr. Speaker. I rest my case, Mr. Speaker. Senator Chirange. I gave the guidance when I was giving the communication. What is before you is a motion to pass a resolution for special committee. Either you are for it or you are not for it. The substance of the impeachment cannot be the subject matter of any senator's contribution here. It's either you are opposing and you give the reasons why you think the plenary will be a better forum to handle this matter. Kindly avoid delving into the substance of the impeachment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm well guided, but in the words of Burning Spear, they are uh, saying that uh, we are not all that stupid, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to borrow in the words of uh, Lucky Dube, Mr. Speaker, the reggae, that justice, fairness, and social equality should be the cornerstone, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the reason I'm saying is we need to ensure that there are principles of natural justice. Mr. Speaker, plenary, Waititu case, Songo case, among other governors that were uh, 
we listen to Mr. Speaker through plenary, it gives opportunity to new members to learn. Because Senate should be the learning curve to expose them, Mr. Speaker. The committee way is limited because at the resolution of the committee, I had a, a misconception and misleading the House at some point by some members that saying, Senate will have the second bite on the cherry. It does not have, Mr. Speaker. Because when the committee sits and agree that uh, uh, governor is not guilty or not guilty, Mr. Speaker, then that matter ends there, Mr. Speaker. So we are ready to listen to the, to the plenary way as we listen to the tunes of guitar, Mr. Speaker, so that we understand, be very keen, and be very to listen, Mr. Speaker. So I propose that we go to plenary way. I have been the champion of plenary way on the floor of the House, Mr. Speaker, so that we have opportunity, Mr. Speaker, so that Senator Crystal Asike, and I want to inform members, Mr. Speaker, for benefit, because I rarely give out my advice pro bono, Mr. Speaker, but today I do it for free. Mr. Speaker, you have opportunity to cross-examine, to analyze, to look at the documentation, Senator Okia Mutata, so that when somebody moves to court, the way Senator Okia Mutata moved, Mr. Speaker, they will not question that Senate did not consider, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I oppose, let us go to plenary way. And I thank my chair, Mr. Speaker, he is always brilliant. Senator Moses Otieno Kajuang is the man to watch. Senator Mungatana. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Senator Sifuna, I can only pick a senator from this side whose name is on the dashboard. As we speak, the names on the dashboard are all from this side. So if you wish to speak. Proceed. Mr. Speaker, I, I, I just wanted to say something which hasn't been said, that you see, and uh, honorable members who are practitioners in the courts, Mr. Speaker, when a witness appears before you, you have the benefit of looking at that witness, you see the eyes, you see the demeanor of that witness. You appreciate even the voice in terms of presentation, whether that person is actually telling the truth. You have the opportunity to feel that witness. Now, since this Senate is going to be sitting as a court, Mr. Speaker, it's fair, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm trying to uh, you know, appeal to the legal minds on the other side that, Mr. Speaker, since we are sitting what is your point of order, as a court, Senator, Senator Mungatana, kindly yield. Uh, I will yield. Um, Mr. Speaker, thank you. I wanted uh, it's a point of um, clarification. Is the good Senator Mungatana trying to imply that uh, people who cannot see will not be able to prosecute a matter? is uh, because we know very well that we even in Kenya have a judge who is blind and he does a fantastic job um, in the, and he does not see the witness's demeanor, their facial expressions or anything else um, in terms of body language. So Mr. Speaker, I would like some clarification from Mungatana if that um, point in, in his argument is actually factual. Thank you. Senator Mungatana, be, Mr. Speaker, be sensitive on this matter. I hardly wish to engage uh, uh, my very good uh, friend, because we come a long way with the old man. So I, I don't want to go that way, but even if you have you know, challenges in terms of visual uh, uh, challenges, Mr. Speaker, you still, when the witness is before you, you feel the voice. You feel it. And Mr. Speaker, especially for people who have been in these courts for a long time, you can actually tell when a witness is telling a lie or telling the truth. So, Mr. Speaker, my point, which hasn't been said, is that we want the court, the entire court, the entire Senate, to have the benefit of the witness. I want to see Kawira Mwangaza, because the last time I never saw her. I never saw her, I never heard anything from her. I just, you know, the committee sat and then said she was okay. I want to see her. I want to see what is the problem. How does this person who is disturbing the entire Meru, how does she look like, Mr. Speaker? I just want to see. I support that we should have plenary. 
I oppose this motion. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Karungo. Senator Karungo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I must thank you because I landed back today from Angola, where you had appointed me to represent this country at the IPU Assembly. And that shows that you have confidence in me. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the same thing I can say, whoever put my name on this motion to be a member of the 11 member committee has a lot of confidence in me. Because, Mr. Speaker, I really was part of that committee previously. Maybe probably I bring institutional memory, and probably I know a thing or two. And that's why I'm standing here, Mr. Speaker, to support this motion, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I have to support it because I believe the committee work is supposed to investigate and, of course, substantiate the allegations. Now, how does a plenary investigate, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, I, I, I believe in the rule of law, in processes, because I know one day, one time, I'm going to be here, Mr. Speaker. What I'm trying to insinuate, Mr. Speaker, the only problem... What is the point of order, Senator Chiriot? Mr. Speaker, uh, wouldn't it have been... I'm just uh, curious. I've heard Senator Karungo say, how does the plenary do an investigation? Then my question to him is, how will you find out if you don't give yourself the chance to serve in a plenary? because you've had the opportunity to serve in a committee. Yes. Do not be victim of the misinformation that is being peddled on the floor. I have told you as your leader, and I cannot mislead you, that there is nothing that you can do in a committee which you cannot do in plenary, including questioning the witness. Uh, th that is you. more of a point of information than a yeah. point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for that information. I hope you freezed my time. Mr. Speaker, Senator Chute enumerated very well those who went through the committee and those who went through the plenary. May I inform this House that those who went through the committee, they are still in office or they never left office. Those who went through the plenary, they are home today, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, so, but my issue, order, Order. If you have information to pass, you know exactly what to do. Mr. Proceed, Speaker, Senator. before I'm informed, I am standing here to say that I believe in the committee way. The only problem with the committee is when they find out that grounds are not substantiated, they don't bring, they, they, we don't discuss that report. And that's why I have a bill that is in your office, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Probably it will be here, whereby we should always be going through the committee but either, whether they find substantiated or not substantiated, it must be brought to the plenary for scrutiny so that we can go through it, all of us. But a committee will always do a good work by writing to offices. Now imagine, we want to stand here as a plenary and I want to investigate myself. Do I write as Senator Dangwa or do I write to the speaker for the speaker to write to that office? But a committee has a chair. Senator Roba. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, uh, I rise to contribute to this motion before I decide whether to oppose <laughs> or, or to support. Mr. Speaker, I was privileged to have served in the first impeachment as a committee member. And uh, quite sincerely, I hold a favorable view that uh, uh, a committee will do justice uh, to justice to uh, the, this impeachment process by getting the opportunity to be able to look in depth into the issues. However, Mr. Speaker, I was 
disadvantage. I was, uh, uh, you know, it was unfortunate enough. Uh, the behavior that was portrayed during the first impeachment by members of this house, and members of this house were people who are not members of the committee who really went ahead to give even derogatory statements directly in the face of committee members in the most disrespectful manner uh, uh, without any justification whatsoever that has really put uh, a lot of, uh, you know, question mark on, the, you know, the diligently, you know, the diligent investigation done by the committee and the decision that the committee undertook. And eventually, what came out is a situation that manifested a position of distrust within uh, our own members here. And I want to go on record for purposes of, uh, I mean, for the benefit of the people of Meru, Meru County, for them to understand we are not prosecuting anything at the Senate right now. We are only trying to agree on modalities of execution of the responsibility before us. And as such, there, there is no predetermined position. We are only agreeing uh, which both ways are legal. I incline, because of that bad experience uh, and the position of distrust that was portrayed by members of this House, that maybe for the benefit of them getting to understand the treacherous work that the committees undergo, uh, to give them the opportunity for that to be executed through the plenary as uh, suggested. Both ways are legal. And uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, I am not responding to my brother Kajuang, but there is nothing wrong you know, with holding different views you know, in terms of whether A or B in terms of what is constitutionally allowed. And we're only taking that position. That is my uh, take, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I oppose. Senator Akenyi, Beatrice. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I rise to support uh, uh, the position that we go the committee way. One, Honorable Speaker, uh, from the presentations earlier, one of the senators indicated that uh, we should give new members an opportunity uh, to also uh, get the experience of uh, the committees. And Honorable Speaker, I've seen in the names that have been forwarded, Senator Sige is one of them. Uh, she had not been a member of the, an earlier committee, and so I want to support that will be a very good opportunity for her also to experience uh, the committee way. And Honorable Speaker, uh, that should also follow that a number of us that are new in the next time will also get an opportunity to experience uh, the committee way of dealing with impeachment. And Honorable Speaker, the second reason why I want to support going by the committee is that committees are also... Order senators. Senator Miraj. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. The committee will also en uh, ensure that the matter is dealt with with clarity, Honorable Speaker, because there'll be fewer members, uh, less time is spent in the uh, deliberations. And so, Honorable Speaker, I support uh, the committee way uh, so that we also want to see the committee should also uh, intensely study how over 50, over uh, three quarters of MCS would vote against the governor. And that can only be determined by intensively looking at the matter in a more uh, where less members are. I therefore support the committee way, Honorable Speaker. Senator Veronica. Honorable Speaker, thank you for this opportunity. I rise to oppose this motion for the reason that uh, studying order 80 provides for the procedure for removal of a governor. It provides either for plenary and provides for a special committee. Mr. Speaker, when I look at the functions that are laid out in standing order 82A and B, Mr. Speaker, the function remains the same for both the special committee and the plenary, Mr. Speaker. 
And Mr. Speaker, just in line with the message you read to this House, as you were detailing the charges that have come from the Meru County, it was clear, Mr. Speaker, that when Senate resumes as plenary or as a special committee to consider the charges that are levied against the Governor, Mr. Speaker, either the special committee or the plenary will have the function to investigate the matter and it will sweet as a quasi-judicial uh, body, Mr. Speaker. That means it will not be ordinary debate. It will be a body that will be investigative in nature. Any document that is presented 